Texas Instruments new Spy to Can FD SBC plus Lynn Booster Pack features the TCAN 4550Q1 Can FD controller with integrated transceiver, providing microcontrollers without an integrated Can FD controller or those needing additional channels access to Can FD applications through a SPI interface. LIN applications can also be developed using the TLIN 2029 Q1 fault protected LIN transceiver and the MCU's UART port, making this booster pack an ideal starting point for any CAN FD or LIN system. The supply voltage, CAN FD, and LIN bus signals are available on a DB9 connector, allowing for easy integration into test fixtures and wiring harnesses. Both the TCAN 4550Q1 and TLIN 2029 q one devices are designed to support automotive applications with a typical battery supply voltage of 12 volts. The booster pack requires an external 6 volts to 24 volts supplied to the DC barrel jack J2 or to pin 9 of the DB9 connector J7. The shunt on J1 selects which source is used for the VBAT supply. A dual channel LDO uses this supply to create 3.3 volts and 5 volt rails for the booster pack's components and can supply the launch pad if desired by placing shunts on J11 and J12. Placing a shunt between the LDO enable and LDO pull up pins of header J15 will enable the LDO whenever the supply voltage is present. Otherwise, Placing the shunt between the LDO enable and inhibit pins will allow the TCAN 4550Q1's inhibit pin to disable the LDO when it enters sleep mode and place the booster pack into a low power mode. The TCAN 4550Q1 will wake from sleep mode when it receives a valid wake up pattern on the CAN bus or when the wake push button S1 is pressed. VCC out TCAN 4550Q1's internal 5V LDO output voltage is not used on the board but is available on test point TP1. LEDs have been placed on the digital signals and voltage rails and grouped together for easy reference. GPO2 and NINT LEDs use an inverted signal to allow the LED to turn on during an interrupt event which occurs when the signal becomes logic low and the GPIO1 LED will turn on when the signal becomes logic high. The TCAN 4550Q1 can be reset by pressing push button S2 or through a signal from a MCU GPIO pin supplied on pin 17 of the launch pad connectors, labeled GPIO reset. The launch pad's reset signal on pin 16 of the launch pad connectors can also be used to reset the TCAN 4550Q1 during the MCU reset by placing a shunt on J10. Since the TCAN 4550Q1's reset signal is logic high and the MCU signal is logic low, the MCU reset is inverted on the booster pack. CAN FD bus signals are available on the DB9 connector J7 and header J8. Optional TVS diodes are installed on D8 and an optional common mode choke can be installed on L2 after removing resistors R10 and R14. 120 ohm split termination is connected to the CAN bus by placing shunts on J6 and J9. All digital signals connected to the TCAN 4550Q1 are labeled on the launch pad connector pins and in the case of a pin conflict can be isolated by removing the respective zero ohm resistor. There are two possible SPI chip select pins labeled NCS0 and NCS1 on the board. Move resistor R21 to R57 to use NCS1 instead of NCS0. The TLIN 2029 Q1 can be used in both master and slave modes by placing a shunt on J3 for master mode and removing the shunt for slave mode. The LIN bus signal can also be routed to either pin 8 of the DB9 connector by placing a shunt between the LIN and DB9 pins of header J4 or to the wire terminal by placing a shunt between the LIN and term pins of J4. The TLIN 2029 Q1 uses the MCU's UART port labeled UARX and UATX 
on the launch pad connectors as well as a GPIO pin labeled LIN Enable as an Enable. For additional information on the SPY to CAN FD SBC plus LIN Transceiver Booster Pack, please visit the link below. Thanks for watching.